Say hello to my subscribers right there. Uh, hey, we we part of the company. We what? We part of that guy right there. It's the best mechanic there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and now he's an influencer. You no. too. <laughs> Serious. That's one of the best mechanics. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? My name is Mel. Welcome to the channel. This is Holmes Law. The best in conduit bending. Today we are going to be talking about segment offsets. Now, before I start, just want to let you know this is going to be a mini series on segment bending. Okay, so we'll have two other episodes. Uh, the next one will be on three point saddles, segment three point saddles, and then to finish it off, it'll be on parallel offsets, segment parallel offsets. Okay. Now let's get it started. All right, so let's go to the next slide. And for today, it's gonna be segment offsets. We're gonna go over the actual formula calculation and layout. All right, we're gonna go over it on the screen and then we'll go over to the table and actually lay it out and then we'll actually bend it for you. All right, so we'll take you through the steps on how to actually do this. It's fairly easy. If you already know how to do a segment 90, this should be a breeze. And if not, then the actual video should explain everything either way. All right, so let's start off with getting the developed length, okay, of your two bends. Okay, so when an offset, you have two bends, okay, that's going to complete the offset. Now, if you look at the diagram, you're going to have bend A and bend B, which is, you know, typical with your offsets now what you need to do is find out your developed length for these two bends and if you look here on the top left hand side of the screen it'll say develop lengths for less than 90 degrees okay so how you're going to get the developed length for, for less than 90 degrees i'm giving you the formula here right now just so that you know dl means develop length all right so the developed length equals and it's going to give you the formula what you want to do is first figure out what the radius is okay of your two bends bend a and bend b is what i'm talking about now if you have that information okay the radius you're just going to fill in the formula and it'll give you the developed length now i just want to touch upon this i'm going to actually make a video on finding the radius for whatever type of bends you're trying to make okay because we i'm teaching you how to do the segment offsets but uh there are some people out there that don't know how to actually find the radius like let's just say you don't know what the radius is of an object or an obstacle that you're trying to actually go over you're trying to clear it or you want to actually copy the radius or figure out the radius so that you can do a segment bend <clears throat> excuse me to either go over it clear it or copy it so i'm gonna make a video on that as well too because it's very important you know that's how you actually get you know to start doing the actual segment bend or concentric bends or whatever and we'll talk about concentrics in another video but basically i just want to let you know that i am going to touch upon that figuring out the radius okay because it is important now let's get it started so let's just say you already have the radius okay you're going to fill in the actual formula okay so for this case we have our example is going to be basically three quarter emt okay our radius is going to be 15 inches our offset's going to be for 30 degree bends okay and our offset height is going to be 15 inches as well okay so that's our example for this actual video all right so let's fill in the actual formula and we have a radius of 15 inches the degree of bend is 30 so it's radius times the degree of bend times 0 0.0175 you want to remember that decimal value because that's what you're going to actually use okay after you get the value for that 
okay of the develop length once you get the develop length by filling in this formula you're going to take that develop length and you're going to divide it by the number of bends or shots okay when you're dealing with segment bends or concentric bends it's called shots but you know don't get confused all that means is the number of bends that you want okay and that correlates with the degrees that you're going to be bending those shots okay so after that okay we want to figure out the offset you know and that's just the original formula that you do in any offset with okay so it's basically a and b distance which is these two over here if you look at them is you know you're going to use the regular formula which it would be for 30 degree bends you know it's going to be the multiplier of two so we want 15 we want a 15 inch offset so basically for 30 degree bends what is it the multiplier is two so it would be 15 times two so that spacing which is the a and b distance is going to be 30 inches okay and that 30 inches you're going to measure that 30 inches from the start mark of bend a all the way to the start mark of bend b all right so from the start of bend a to the start of bend b it should be 30 inches okay <clears throat> excuse me then from the start mark you'll start laying out your actual you know segment bend for bend a and the start mark from bend b you'll do the same thing all right so if you look on the right hand side of the screen we have the actual example here all right so it's 15 inch radius times 30 degree bends times 0 0.0175 equals 7 and 7 eighths that's your developed length okay so you just can actually take that value and when you're doing your formula all right and your calculations go ahead and just you know write that down and leave that you know to the side so you can actually figure out everything that you need so you don't have to go back and forth doing calculations all right so just calculate everything at once so that you can lay out your conduit at one shot all right so you have seven and seven eighths and you're gonna go ahead and just take that value and divide it by the number of shots for this video we're gonna use six shots which is going to equal five degree bends okay don't forget that five degree bends all right so if you actually take the six shots times five degrees that's going to give you a 30 degree bend all right you can use more or less but pretty much the rule of thumb is you want to keep it anywhere between and this is for anything even with 90 degree segment bends you want to keep it between three degrees and six degrees okay so anyway your spacing is going to be an inch and a quarter pretty much okay so we also have that value now you want to store that as well okay because we're going to continue on with more calculations and like i said before your a and b distance for your regular offset for 30 degree bends is going to be a 30 degree multiplier you're going to do 15 inches because that's the offset height that we want all right don't get it confused with the radius all right we just tried to make it simple as you know as possible so we're going to do a 15 inch it's a 15 inch radius also with a 15 inch offset height all right so the 15 inch offset height multiplied by 2 for the multiplier of 30 degree bends gives you 30 inches all right so if you look down here on the actual diagram you have the developed length which you do is you're going to take your developed length and wh wherever you want to start the actual segment bends is on you okay uh if you're going to cut it and fit it then you can place it wherever you want if you're going to actually if you need a specific location then you want to you want to start it wherever you actually you know need to start it at all right but there's two different ways you're gonna have to do this and i'll let you know what that is now all it basically is is if you're gonna cut it and fit it it's gonna be a lot easier because you can place it anywhere you want and when you're bending these six bends you can place them on the bender wherever you like okay because it doesn't really matter where the offset lands on your conduit but if it 
does matter and you want to be specific and it needs to land in a certain spot okay then you're gonna have to actually make these six bends on center on your hand bender electric bender or on the hydraulic bender and what I mean by that is you're gonna have to if we're doing five degree bends you're gonna have to find the center of five degree bends on whatever shoe of the bender that you're using how do you do that I have multiple videos showing you how to do that I can explain it to you right now really quick and what it is is basically you're gonna take a scrap piece of pipe bend it to five degrees find the center of that five degrees by taking a straight edge you know and trying to you know marking an X you'll take this the straight edge and put it across your bend on one side and then do it on the other side marking it it's gonna give you an X going right directly down the center of your bend of your five degree bend that you did on the scrap pipe you take that center you mark it around the whole scrap piece pipe all right you're gonna take that pipe and you're gonna put it back into the bender exactly the way you bent it before if you know what makes it better is if you mark your scrap piece of pipe before you bend it you mark it so that you know where you're gonna place it on the actual shoe so you place it back in the same spot now when you go and you after you bend it and you find the sensor you place it back in the shoe and exactly where it was when you started bending it and now wherever that center is you're gonna transfer that mark over to the shoe so that we know where five degree center of bend is and that's what you're gonna use for all of these bend marks that we have here okay and that's what you do is if you want to put your segment offset in a specific location on your conduit but if it doesn't matter then you can just use whatever you want on your bender you could use this the uh, actual front of the shoe or if it's a hand bender the arrow or whatever you want to use okay as long as you're using the same mark for all your bends <clears throat> anyway let's keep it moving okay so here let's just uh, go over everything here the a and b distance you know okay so don't forget from start mark of bend a okay which is the first mark which let me let you know too is not a bend mark the bend mark starts from the second mark we have seven marks here okay so what you first want to do is lay out your developed length which is seven and seven eighths okay you start wherever you, you're gonna pick your start of point is okay you start with bend a you put your first mark and then you mark it over seven and seven eighths <clears throat> excuse me then you go back to the star mark and you start laying out all your marks okay you're only gonna actually lay out five of them because you already laid out the last one is gonna be a bend mark okay so you only need to do six marks all right so you lay out your developed length okay you're gonna have two marks when you lay that out and then you fill in the rest of them okay it's an inch and a quarter so you measure from your star mark an inch and a quarter that would be one another inch and a quarter would be two another inch and a quarter would be three another one would be four and your last one would be five because you already have six marked out okay <clears throat> now for the second bend you're gonna measure from the first mark of bend a 30 inches over like how i have here Okay, 30 inches over that would be your start mark for bend B and you do the same thing seven and seven eighths for your developed length then you go back to the first mark and you start laying it out an inch and a quarter apart or whatever your spacing is for your segment offset this is just for the example okay now a reminder your first bend your first mark is not a bend mark it's just a temporary mark to lay out your developed length you start bending from the second mark so what I usually do is I mark my conduit from the second mark all the way around the pipe this way I don't get confused okay and you'll only have a small mark on your conduit for the start mark but all my other marks will be all the way around the pipe this way I know okay this way you don't get confused 
all right now let's go over to the second screen and this is the layout portion okay you have your example here three quarter emt the rise is 15 the radius is 15 the, the bends are 30 degree bends okay that's what we want to complete a completed 30 degree bend but your segment bends are going to be five degree bends six times okay six shots all right and basically you have the same thing you've seen on the other screen just a little more you know in detail all right so you have your start mark here where it says seven and seven eighths is your developed length okay for bend a after you're done laying it out you can actually go from the from your first start mark on bend a and measure over 30 inches and that would be your second start mark and you can lay out your re the rest of your segment bends all the way to 7 8 now whatever order that you do it in is up to you the way I usually do it is I actually lay out my my two bends start mark right away so I pick where I want to actually start my offset I make my first mark for my for the start mark on my bend A. I measure over 30 inches or whatever it is that you're gonna, you know, measure over, and I I write down I mark my second start mark. Then I go back and I start laying out my segment bends, you know, and then I go back and I start laying out my the next segment bends for bend B. Okay, and after that, you know, I start circling all my conduit for all my bends except for the first one so that i don't get confused and that's it we're ready to start bending all right so we are ready to go to the actual table now to lay it out on the table on the actual conduit all right before i do that like i said i wanted you to know okay that you can actually if you're going to cut it and fit it then it doesn't matter where you lay it out or where you, what you use on the bender to actually place your mark on. If you're using a hand bender, then it doesn't matter. You can put it on the front of the shoe or use the arrow. Okay, if you're using a hand bender, I want to also tell you that if you're doing a degree of bend that is not on your hand bender, <clears throat> okay, what you can do is you can actually. If let's just say we're doing five degree bends what I do in the video I just do it by feel okay because it's pretty much you know a small little bend and um, I have a 10 degree mark so basically I just go halfway you know and I just bend it and I'll do two or three bends and I'll check what I have and then I'll just you know continue on bending and if I still don't have enough then I'll go back and I'll start bending a little more now if you're on a hydraulic or electric bender that's not gonna matter because you could actually punch in what you need or on the hydraulic bender you have a digital level or a angle finder and you'll be able to tell how many degrees you're actually bending don't forget the spring back as well now on the hand bender you're not gonna have that so what you could do is you could actually bend a sample bend on a, a scrap piece of pipe if you don't want to do it the way that I do it in the video and you could bend the scrap piece of pipe at five degrees okay put it back on your bender and actually place a mark somewhere where you could actually see you know that it's gonna give you a uh, you know some type of way to s that you could see where you could stop your bend at okay that's up to you and whatever helps you to figure that out after you're done bending your scrap piece like i said just put it back on the bender and put a mark somewhere that's going to actually help you see where you could stop for a five degree bend okay whether it's you know wherever it touches the the actual shoe or any reminder that that'll help you you can choose to do that way okay another way you could do it is if you want is you know check it every time you bend it five degrees you could also check with your digital level if you want but it's not really that serious you know you could just bend a few and check what you have and then just continue on all right <clears throat> just like i do in the video so now let's go ahead and go to the actual table all right and let's lay it out on the actual conduit all right 
before I do that, I just want to actually thank you guys for watching the video. Please share the video with your friends and co-workers. Smash that subscribe button, the like, also any comments or any video requests. Please do send them. Uh, I want to thank everybody that's been supporting me here too as well. I'm trying to actually get the... Uh, finances together to get some equipment to do this professionally i want to be able to give you guys some 4k videos and better shots and angles to actually better help you with conduit bending so again i want to thank you guys i want to thank everybody you know uh overseas um all these other countries too I'm, I'm really like you know amazed at how many other countries are actually watching this as well uh yes just thanks a lot i really really appreciate you guys anyways enough of that let's go to the table hey what's up guys how you doing my name is mel this is holmes law this is going to be the layout process of the segment offset okay and just so that you understand some of some of this i already have laid out Okay, because I'm trying to make the video as short as possible, all right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go over some of the values, okay? We have the rise, which is 15 inches, which you should already know. I'm just going to review it. 30 degree offsets. Our develop length is 7 and 7 eighths. Distance between bends A and B is 30 inches. The spacing between our segment bends are going to be inch and a quarter. And we have six bends at 5 degrees, okay? So let's lay this out. First thing you want to do is decide where you want to actually start your actual offset, okay? Where do you want to start it on the conduit? Now, if you're just going to end up cutting and fitting it, then it doesn't matter. This is going to be even easier. But if you need it in a specific location, then you're gonna, it's going to be a little different, and I will get to that towards the end of the video, <clears throat> okay? So for the video sake, we're going to start at 6 inches, okay six inches from the actual end of the conduit as you see here it's at six inches okay now this will be bend a all right and what you want to do is you want to actually measure out i started to i didn't finish it what you want to do is measure out your developed length so that's going to be seven and seven eighths okay so which is going to bring us right about here okay this is going to be from this distance over here to this distance here is our develop length and then in here we want to put our six shots which is the same thing as six bends <clears throat> and that's where we're going to bend our five degree bends okay six times okay so we already have one laid out inch and a quarter from the start mark okay this is two okay this is three this is four this is five okay and then from here we have six okay pretty much it's about an eighth off or whatever that's just you know has to do with the actual decimal values when you're actually calculating but this is the last one okay so we have one two three four five six marks the first one is not a bend mark so do not count that that's just the start mark to actually lay out your bend okay similar to when you're doing segment 90s okay all right so we have bend a already laid out this is a <clears throat> now from A, from the A start mark, the one that is not a bend mark, you wanna actually measure out the distance between A and B, okay? So you're gonna measure that out to be 30 inches. You're gonna measure that from the A mark, that is the start mark, okay? From there, you wanna measure 30 inches, okay? 30 inches why because we're doing 30 degree bends and our rise is 15 inches we all know that the multiplier is 2 so the distance between a and b is going to be 30 okay so as you can see <clears throat> i already started over here as well okay so we have our start mark for bend b which is right here which is again not a bend mark okay and we started to lay this out as well so let's actually do the developed length first. 
which is what I didn't do because I wanted to do it together with you. So this is the start mark. We want to lay out seven and seven eighths, okay? Which is roughly right around here. Okay, so now we have to do six marks from the start mark an inch and a quarter apart. We have our first one, which is right here. We have our second one, <clears throat> which is going to be right here, marked. Our third one, which is right here. And I'll go over, you know, the whole pipe after I actually get done here. And this is our fourth one. <clears throat> this is our fifth one. And this is our sixth one, okay? Now, give me a minute and I'm gonna go over the whole conduit. Okay, so now we're back. I, I actually did it around the whole conduit, if you can see, okay? This is V-bend. Let's see if you can see that. <clears throat> okay, and this first mark is not a bend mark, okay? You have one, two, three, four, five, six bends which at five degrees equals 30 degree bends, okay? Now, basically, we're ready to actually start bending, okay? Now, at this part here, you can actually use a no dog, all right? Even though it's a, it's, we're gonna do a hand bender still, you know, you can use a no dog if you prefer. Now, if you're gonna be on an electric bender or a hydraulic bender because you're doing it on larger conduit <clears throat> you definitely want to put a no dog on okay and if you're gonna cut and fit this into your your conduit run then you can actually just line these up here with the front of your shoe with the front of the saddle if it's a hydraulic bender or if it's the the cyclone or whatever you could you could line it up right with the front of the hook and just bend it and move it on down to you know uh, five degrees and keep bending them. Okay, it doesn't matter. You won't have to bend it on the center because you, you're not trying to get specific, you know, with the actual offset. Okay, <clears throat> that's only if it doesn't matter where you actually want this offset on the conduit. Now, if it does, then you're going to have to figure out on your hand bender or on your. Uh, cyclone or hydraulic bender you have to find out where the center of five degree is and i have videos showing you how to do that it's really simple just make a just bend the five degree bend put a straight edge on it figure out where the center of the bend is mark it on your actual conduit that has the bend on it put it back into the shoe and transfer that mark over to the shoe simple then you know where the center of a five degree bend is and you put all of these marks on that mark on the shoe that you just transferred over <clears throat> and that's the center of five degrees and in that case then you could actually then you'll have it specifically wherever you want it okay on your conduit run enough said of that now we are ready to actually make these bends Stop 
maybe in a couple of bands and I'll check it with my digital level and I'll go where I'm at from there, okay? Pretty much, you're only doing five degree bend, you have a 10 degree mark, so I'm only gonna rip it lightly bending, okay? We're gonna do six bends and that'll be pretty much it, all right? So you wanna go ahead and put, place it on whichever mark you're gonna use and make sure that you're gonna keep all your marks straight, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and bend. Now another thing is, <clears throat> I like to bend my, my contour with it under my armpit. This way I have more control. A lot of people like to bend it like this and just tug on it. I think that's a bad way to bend. If you're taller and you can't actually get under it and get in it, another way to do it is to actually lean it forward. You can lean it forward and put your foot, you know, in back of it. And if you lean it forward a little bit, you can still get a little bit closer and bend it. I know that a few taller people, you know, actually bend it this way and they come out with good results. Me personally, if you can, I would actually get under it with this hand coming under, or if you can, you know, hold it to the side and this hand on top as close as possible to the actual shoe. Okay, and you want to go ahead and use your body weight. You don't have to actually bend it with your hand. You're going to use your body weight and just come down with it and you can do a controlled bend. And that's the best way to bend, okay? So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, start bending these bends at five degrees, okay? So bend number one. I'm just going to bend these and then I'll come back to you as soon as I'm done. So let's just bend one. show you we have pretty much 30 degree bends okay I had to adjust a couple now if you're if you do all your bends and you're still under what you're trying to reach let's just say you, you have 25 degrees and you're trying to reach 30 and you did all your bends just start back from the from the the last one that you did and work your way forward again okay and just bend them slightly and you'll be okay, all right? And you'll get 30, and if you get, go over a little bit, then you can just take it out a little bit, you know? But with the hydraulic and the electric bender, you should not have a problem doing that, okay? But um, yeah, so let's go ahead to bend B and do the same process over again, okay? Okay, so this is gonna be bend B, all right? And we're just gonna line it up with our other bend, making sure that we're straight, no dog legs, okay? And we're just gonna go ahead and start to bend again, okay? Five degree bends, pretty much, and I'm gonna have mine in the front of the shoe. You can put your marks wherever you like, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and start to bend. And we just slide it on down, same process, making sure that we're straight, okay? And once more, here we go. Okay, so here is the end results. I apologize, you know, if uh, you didn't see all the bends, but pretty much it's all repetitive, okay? Like I said before, if you come up too short or too much, just take out some bends or you can actually go back to your bend marks and bend a little more till you get to the degrees that you need, okay? In this case, they're both 30 degree bends, A and B, so that's what I was shooting for, okay? And it's a 15 inch offset, okay? And that's pretty much, you know, pretty much it. This is segment offsets, 
one, two, three, four, five, six bends, five degree each equals 30 degree offsets. Okay, this is really simple to do and it's very useful to know. You ever wanna go around a big obstacle that has a big radius, you can do it like this or if you just wanna make your wire pose a lot easier, it only takes a little bit more time and you'll, you'll gain that time back when you're doing the wire pulls. Okay, so with that said, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you got a lot out of the video. Please shoot me those requests at uh, any social media at Holmes Law or you can leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Also, please like, share, and subscribe and let your coworkers and friends know. And as soon as possible, as soon as they get the equipment, I'm actually starting to you know, get the funds together to actually get some better equipment so that we can make some nice 4K videos with some awesome shots for you guys. Thanks, and I'm out.